السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم عمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة الحمد لله we praise Allah and we seek his assistance and we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge with Allah from the evil within ourselves and from our bad deeds However, Allah guides, there is none that can lead him astray, and whoever is led astray, and there is no guide for him. I bear witness that no God has the right to be worshipped other than Allah. He is alone and has no partners, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as you ought to be feared, and don't die except as Muslims. O humanity, fear your Lord who has created you from a single soul and created from it its mate, and scattered from them too many men and women. And fear Allah for whom you demand your mutual rights and don't cut off relations with the wombs that bore you. Indeed, Allah is a a watcher over you. O you who believe, fear Allah and say that which is correct. In order that he may accept from you your deeds and forgive you of your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger achieves the greatest achievement. Amma ba'du. 
Certainly the most truthful speech is the book of Allah. And the finest guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evil of affairs are newly infinite matters in the deen. And every newly infinite matter in the deen is a bid'ah. And every bid'ah is a strain. Brothers and sisters in Islam, fear Allah and read the Qur'an. And listen as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, وَأَتِمُّ الْحَجَّ وَالْعُمْرَةَ لِلَّهِ Al-Aya. Allah Ta'ala, he says, I command you to complete the Hajj and the Umrah for my sake alone. Allah Ta'ala, he says in other ayah, Al-Hajj ashurun ma'lumat. فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّ فَلَا رَفَفَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ وَمَا تَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ يَعْلَمْهُ اللَّهِ وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى وَاتَّقُونِ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Allah Ta'ala, he says, Hajj is during well-known months. Those well-known months, scholars of tafsir, they say, Shawwal, the month after Ramadan, Dhul Qa'da, the month after that, and then Dhul Hijjah, the month after that. And there's other statements pertaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement, Al Hajj wa Shurum Ma'lumat. And the Hajj is during well known months. So whoever makes it an obligation on himself to perform the Hajj, meaning by entering into the state of Ihram, then there is no rafaf, no fusuq, and no jidal during the hajj. The rafaf has different meanings. Scholars of tafsir, they say that there is no foul, obscene, or bad language or actions. Others, they say what's meant by it is that there is no sweet talk, fresh talk to your wife during the period of the ihram. And others of the scholars, they say what's meant is actually the act of marital relations. And Imam al-Tabri rahimahullah holds the position that so long as Allah didn't specify one of the particular meanings, that all of these meanings are included. And no fusuq, no disobedience, no disobedience to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during the hajj and no arguing, no arguing and debating, meaning that leads to anger and fighting with one another. And take your provisions, and the best of provisions is taqwa. Allah Ta'ala, he says, and whatever you do of good, then Allah knows it. The good that you do during hajj, you do during hajj Allah knows it, and he rewards it. And he commands you to take your provisions and the best of provisions is taqwa. And taqwa is to do what Allah commands and to stay away from what Allah forbids. This means don't go to the hajj or the umrah with no money. Begging the people when you're there, take your provisions with you. And the best provisions is taqwa. Oh, you people of understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in other ayah, وَإِذْ بَوَّأْنَا لِإِبْرَاهِيمَ مَكَانَ الْبَيْتِ أَلَّا تُشْرِكْ بِي شَيْئًا وَطَاهِرْ بَيْتِي وَطَاهِرْ بَيْتِي لِلطَّائِفِينَ وَالْقَائِمِينَ وَالرُّكَّعِ السُّجُودِ وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ لِيَشْهَدُوا مَنَافِعَ لَهُمْ وَيَذْكُرُ اسْمَ اللَّهِ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْلُومَاتٍ عَلَى مَا رَزَقَهُمْ مِنْ بَهِيمَةِ الْأَنْعَامِ فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا وَأَطْعِمُوا الْبَائِسَ الْفَقِيرِ Allah Ta'ala, he says in these ayat, and remember, when we designated the location of the house for Ibrahim, for Abraham, this house is the house you're facing right now, Al-Ka'aba in Mecca. We said, and do not associate any partners in worship with me and purify the house for those who perform the tawaf around it 
or those who are standing therein in the salat, or those who are bowing and prostrating, so that you may attend the benefits for yourselves. Some of the scholars of tafsir, they explain this means to make business during the hajj and the umrah time, to benefit yourselves in this world and by the performance of the rites in the hereafter, and to remember Allah during a specific number of days. Some of the scholars of tafsir, they say these days refer to the 10 days of Dhul Hajjah. And other scholars have different meanings, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. To remember Allah on these specific days for the fact that He has guided you by providing you with livestock and cattle, camels, cattle, sheep, and goats. Allah has provided you with this eat therefrom, meaning what you slaughter for Allah's sake, and give out to the miserable poor, meaning those who are begging, give them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in other ayah, inna awwala baytin wudhi'a lil nasi lalladhi bi bakkata mubarakan wa hudan lil alameen. Fihi ayatum bayinatum maqamu ibrahim. وَمَنْ دَخَلَهُ كَانَ آمِنًا وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah Ta'ala he says indeed the first house built for the worship of Allah is the one at Bekka. Bekka is the area directly around the Kaaba in Mecca. In it are clear proofs, the maqam of Ibrahim, the Abraham station, and whoever enters it will be in peace. And it is, upon, it is a duty upon humanity to perform the hajj to the house of Allah for Allah's sake, for whoever has the ability to do so. And whoever disbelieves, then Allah is free, rich, free, and independent from all the worlds. We benefit from these ayat, the obligation of performing the hajj and the umrah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its virtues. And we see as well in the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam buni al-islam wa ala khamsin shahadati an la ilaha illa Allah وأن محمدا رسول الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة والحج والصوم رمضان متفق عليه On the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar رضي الله عنهما He said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said Islam is based on five pillars To bear witness that there is no God but Allah And that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah To establish the Salah To pay the Zakat to perform the Hajj and to fast the month of Ramadan collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أيها الناس قد فرض الله عليكم الحج فحجوا فقال رجل يا رسول أكل عام يا رسول الله فسكت حتى قالها ثلاثة ثم قال صلى الله عليه وسلم لو قلت نعم لوجبت ولم استطعتم ثم قال ذروني ما تركتكم فإن من كان قبلكم فإنما هلك من كان قبلكم باختلافهم على أن بخ إن الذين إن الذي الذين من إن الذين هلك إن الذين من قبلكم هلكوا بكثرة سؤالهم واختلافهم على أنبيائهم وإذما قال إذا أمرتكم بأمر بشيء فأتوا منه ما استطعتم وإذا نهيتكم عن شيء فدعوا أخرجه مسلم أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه يسأل the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said O oh humanity Allah has made the Hajj an obligation upon you, a farm. 
So I command you to perform the Hajj. A man said, Is that every single year, O Messenger of Allah? And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was silent until he asked three times. And then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, If I said yes, it would have been an obligation and you wouldn't have been able to handle it. So leave me alone with what I've left for you. Because indeed those who came before you were only destroyed because of excessive questioning and differing with their prophets. So when I command you to do something, do it as much as you have the ability to do so. And if I forbid you from something, then leave it. Collected by Imam Muslim. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سئل أي العمل أفضل قال إيمان بالله ورسوله قيل ثم ماذا قال الجهاد في سبيل الله قيل ثم ماذا قال حج المبرور متفق عليه on the authority of Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه he said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked which deed is best? He said, Iman, belief, faith in Allah and His Messenger, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was asked, then what? He said, Al-Jihadu fi sabilillah. He was asked, then what? He said, Hajjul Mabroor. And the scholars of Hadith give different meanings to this statement, Hajjul Mabroor, which means the accepted Hajj. Meaning the Hajj performed in accordance with Allah's book and the Sunnah of His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Hajj that is free from obscene, foul, bad language and actions, or marital relations, or words that lead to that, or acts of disobedience to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and arguing and debating and fighting over issues. The Hajj is clear. In light of Allah's book and the sunnah of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This hadith is collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من حج لله فلم يرفث ولم يفسق رجعك يوم ولدت أمه متفق عليه on the authority of Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه he said that I heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, whoever performs the Hajj sincerely and solely for the sake of Allah alone, without any obscene actions or language or marital relations during the state of Ihram, and no arguing and debating and fighting over issues, then he returns home forgiven like the day that his mother gave birth to him. Collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من حج هذا البيت فلم يرفث ولم يفسق رجع كما ولدته أمه متفق عليه on the authority of Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه he said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever performs the Hajj to this house referring to the Kaaba. And he doesn't commit obscene and foul language or marital relations while in the state of Ihram. He doesn't argue and debate that which leads to fighting. He will return like the day his mother gave birth to him, collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم العمرة إلى العمرة كفارة لما بينهما والحج المبرور ليس له جزاء إلا الجنة متفق عليه on the authority of Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه قال he said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said one umrah to the next umrah is atonement for the sins committed in between them and الحج المبرور the correctly performed hajj there is no reward for it except Jannah except paradise Collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. وعن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تابعوا بين الحج والعمرة فإنهما ينفيان الفقر والذنوب كما ينفي الكير خبث الحديد والذهب والفضة. 
وليس للحجة الم... وليس للحجة المبرورة ثواب إلا الجنة أخرج أبو دو والنسائي وغيره وقال الألباني حسن صحيح. On the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه he said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said continue to perform one Hajj after the next. Continue to perform one Umrah after the next. Meaning if you made one Hajj make another one. And if you make another one then make another one. And if you perform the Umrah then perform another one. And if you performed another one, then perform another one. Because indeed the Hajj and the Umrah, they remove poverty and sins, just as the bellow removes the filth from iron, gold, and silver. And there is no reward for the Hajj performed correctly, except paradise, collected by Abu Dawood and An-Nasai, and authenticated as Hasan and Sahib al-Albaniyu. وعن أم المؤمنين عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت يا رسول الله نرى الجهاد أفضل العمل أفلا نجاهد فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم لا ولكن جهادكم الحج المبرور Akhraju al-Bukhari, or as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, narrated from Aisha, the mother of the believers, radiallahu anha, she said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, we view al-jihad to be the best deed. Should we women not perform the jihad? And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, your jihad is the performance of hajj, or as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in this hadith of al-Bukhari, these ayah, an authentic hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is an encouragement for us to perform the rites and rituals of the Hajj and the Umrah. Now I've heard throughout the years, unfortunately, when we call people to perform the rites and rituals of al-Islam, they say those rituals don't mean anything. People are doing stuff, they don't know why they're doing it. But then they're celebrating their birthdays, buying a cake, candles, blowing it out, making a wish. What are you doing that for? What kind of sense does that make? Is there anyone who can answer your du'as other than Allah? On New Year's Day, and by the way, they changed New Year's. New Year's used to be the first day of spring. Then a couple hundred years ago, they decided, never mind with that New Year's. The real, correct New Year's. Let's make January 1st the New Year's. And then you do New Year's resolutions. Writing them down on the refrigerator, trying to live up to them. Where did you get these rites and rituals from? Kufr. Opposition to Allah's book and the sunnah of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This house that you're facing, Allah is commanding you to visit it. May Allah give us the success to visit his house. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisaan al-muslimin min kulli dhamb fa astaghfiru anna huwa al-ghafur al-rahim I said what I had to say and I seek forgiveness for myself and for you and for all of the Muslims. So seek Allah's forgiveness. Indeed he is the forgiving, the merciful. عن ابن عباس بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تسافر المرأة إلا مع ذي محرم ولا يدخل عليها رجل إلا ومعها محرم فقال رجل يا رسول الله إني أريد إني أريد أن أخرج في جيش في جيش كذا وكذا وامرأتي تريد الحج فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أخرج معها 
muttafakun alayhi on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu ma he said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said don't let a lady travel except with a mahram meaning an adult male from her family and don't let a man enter upon a lady except with a mahram a man said oh messenger of Allah I want to go fight jihad in army so and so but my wife wants to go out and perform the hajj the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said go out and perform the hajj with her collected by al-Bukhari you and Muslim and I know unfortunately many women they take the Quran and the Sunnah into their own hands and give it an explanation from their own lowly desires but right here in this country when you go to motor vehicles social security office or anything else you need to do they tell you the rules you go by the rules but when it comes to Islam then you have your own interpretation of what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meant and what he meant is not a secret no one has a monopoly on Islam not Arab or non-Arab not American or outside of America everyone has the ability to learn this knowledge women must not travel without a mahram yes some hadith say a day and a night two days and two nights three days and three nights Prophet Sallallahu is just describing different journeys different trips but every trip so long as it's a trip then the lady must have a mahram with her in accordance with the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the hajj is a trip as we've been encouraged from these ayat and authentic hadith of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam an ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu ma qala lamma raja'a an-nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam min hajjatihi qala li um sinan al-ansariyya ma mana'aki an tahajji ما منعك من الحج فقالت أبو فلان يعني زوجها له ناضحان حج على أحدهم على أحدهما والآخر يسقي أرضا لنا فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن العمرة في رمضان تقضي حجة أو حجة معي أخرجه البخاري وفي رواية تعدل حجة. On the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما he said when the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم returned from his Hajj and the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم performed four Umrahs first and then he did his Hajj after صلى الله عليه وسلم. So whether you do the Hajj first or the Umrah first as the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم did. It's all acceptable. Walhamdulillah. When he returned, he said to Um Sinan al Ansariya, What prevented you from performing the Hajj? She said, Abu so and so, referring to her husband. He only has two camels. He performed the Hajj on one of them, and the other camel was used to irrigate our land. The Messenger وسلم, said, The Umrah performed in the month of Ramadan is like a hajj or he said it's like performing the hajj with me or he said it equals hajj in one of the narrations collected by Imam al-Bukhari these are hadith encourage the women as well to go out with their husbands and their mahrams to perform the hajj and the umrah sincerely and solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سمع رجلا يقول لبيك 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 بالعمرة لشبرما فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من شبرما قال أخ لي أو قريب لي فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حج عن نفسك ثم حج عن شبرما أخرجه أبو داود وحسنه وصححه الألباني on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما he said 
that the Prophet ﷺ heard a man saying, Oh Allah, I'm here to perform the Umrah on behalf of Shubrama. So the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, Who's Shubrama? He said, A brother of mine or relative of mine. So the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, Perform the Hajj on, on behalf of yourself first and then perform the Hajj on behalf of Shubrama. Collected authentically by Abu Dawood. Yes, you can perform Hajj for someone provided that you performed Hajj for yourselves. Even the little children can perform the Hajj. As we see in the hadith of Yazid ibn Sa'ib radiallahu anhu, قَالَ حُجَّ بِي مَعَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَانَ بْنُ سَبْعُ سِنِينَ أخرجها البخاري والسابع بن يزيد هي سال Someone took me to perform the Hajj along with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when I was only seven years old collected by Imam al-Bukhari even we can take our little children to the Hajj with us of course when they grow up they have to take the responsibility on themselves to perform the Hajj and the Umrah for Allah's sake. But we can take them while they are young for the importance of the Hajj and the Umrah, teaching them this magnificent obligation. May Allah give us all the success to perform the Hajj and the Umrah. It takes an effort. It does. Make an effort. You make an effort when it's time to buy some nice furniture. You make an effort when it's time to buy those lizard and alligator shoes. You make an effort when it's time to buy those fur coats. Some of these items cost more than the Umrah itself. It's a religious obligation. Save your money and make the effort. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu in tansurullaha yansurkum. Oh, you who believe, if you help Allah, Allah will help you and make your feet firm. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannah. Oh, Allah, we ask you for jannah. Allahumma ajirna min al nar Oh, Allah, save us from the fire. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar our Lord give us the good in this world and the good in the hereafter and save us from the fire. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk walhamdulillah. استووا سو صفوفكم وترى الصولة تختلف فتختلف قلوبكم من التسويت صف من تمام الصلاة استووا 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 سو صفوفكم وترى الصولة تختلف فتختلف قلوبكم من التسويت صف من تمام الصلاة straighten the rows straighten the rows Straighten the rows and fill the gaps. Line up foot to foot and shoulder to shoulder. Don't leave your rows crooked or Allah will divide your hearts. Straightening the rows is a part of perfecting the salat. Straighten the rows. Straighten the rows. Straighten the rows and fill the gaps. Line up foot to foot and shoulder to shoulder. Don't leave your rows crooked or Allah will divide your hearts. Straightening the rows is a part of perfecting the salat. استووا استووا سووا صفوفكم وترى الصولة تختلف فتختلف قلوبكم إن تسويت الصف من تمام الصلاة straighten the rows 
Straighten the rows. Straighten the rows and fill the gaps. Line up foot to foot and shoulder to shoulder. Don't leave your rows crooked. Allah will divide your hearts. Straightening the rows is a part of perfecting the salah. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawm Al-Deen, Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim, Sirat Al-Lazeen An'amta Alayhim, Ghayri Al-Maghdub Alayhim, Walad, والتين والزيتون وطور سينين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر
alaykum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته
son. Assalamu alaikum. This is my nephew. Just, just come from Bangladesh.